Hello guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Hit the bell icon button so that you don't miss out any tutorial. Hello, and welcome to this introduction to ethical hacking course. In this video, we're going to be talking about SQL injection vulnerabilities. And so before we dive into SQL injection, we need to talk about what SQL is. And so if you're not familiar, SQL is a language for performing database queries, updates, etc. Essentially managing the data that's stored in a database. And so SQL injection vulnerabilities take advantage of the fact that many of these SQL commands involve external user input and that a developer may not have properly say, sanitized that user input before using it. And so in this video, we're going to be using WebGoat to practice SQL exploitation. And so you'll remember WebGoat, we installed it in an earlier video. And at this screen here, I've um, started up WebGoat in the command line, browse to the WebGoat web interface at localhost 8080 slash webgoat and logged in using credentials had created previously. And so if we look at the right hand or sorry left hand pane here, we see that webgoat overall is organized based off of the SQL top 10 vulnerabilities. That's what these A1 through A9 are. And we also see a previous high-ranking vulnerability request forgery that no longer shows up on the most recent list. We're going to be looking under injection at SQL injection and starting out with the intro course. And so each of the courses in WebGoat are structured very similarly. We'll start out talking about the concept and goals. There'll be some discussion setting the stage for um, performing the attack, including the opportunity to practice certain skills, and then a walk through how the attack works and performing different stages of it. And so in this case, our focus is understanding how SQL works and how to perform an SQL injection attack. And so moving on, we talk about what is SQL. And so mentioned that it's a programming language for managing relational databases. And so we're going to have a database composed of tables like this, where we have certain fields with names, say user ID, and then values. And these are horizontally um, organized into records. And so we have Toby Barnett with a user ID of 89761. And so using different SQL commands, we can um, query this database for information, we can add information to it, delete it, update it, etc. And so that um, those commands are governed by certain keywords. So select is for retrieving data, insert is for adding data, updating is for updating data, and deleting is for deleting data. And so um, if you want to practice your SQL queries, there is the opportunity to do so here at the bottom of the page. If you want more information on the format of an SQL query, which is very important for performing SQL injection attacks successfully, highly recommend W3Schools, which has a complete tutorial, including examples of how something works, opportunities to try it yourself as well. And so you can see uh, opportunities for inserting certain statements to perform, say, select operations. They also have other ones such as insert into, update, and delete. And so you can practice your syntax to make sure that you're building queries correctly. And so if you're not really familiar with SQL, recommend pausing the video and playing around a little bit here with W3Schools to get a good handle on the structure of an SQL query as it's important for understanding and performing SQL injection attacks. And so now let's dive a little bit more into WebGoat's SQL module. And so past this, we see that beyond data markup, it's also data definition language. And so there are commands for managing the database, creating it, changing its structure, and deleting it or dropping it in this case. 
and we can move on to um, data control where we can grant or remote or sorry grant or revoke privileges regarding the database using SQL queries as well. And so now here in the gray we start getting into actual SQL injection attacks. And so as I mentioned previously SQL injection takes advantage of two things. Um, the fact that SQL queries are based off of untrusted user input, which is mixed in with the command code, and that the developer of the code that's using this SQL query and building it does not perform proper input validation or sanitization. And so let's take a look here where we see an example of SQL injection. And so what we see is that a SQL query for retrieving information from the database table that we saw earlier is select star from users where name equals and then um, a user provided variable username. And then this username will be in single quotes. So for example, if you entered Smith, you'd see Smith in single quotes. And so Theoretically, this single quote would prevent, protect against SQL injection attacks because anything inside single quotes is considered data and should not be interpreted as code. In practice, unless input is properly validated, there are a number of different ways to take advantage of this construct. So we see a few examples here at the bottom. So let's say that I type Smith single quote or one in single quotes equals one with only a leading single quote. And so if we look here, we see the command that this builds. Select star from users where name equals Smith or one equals one. And so in this case, we're changing the command from select star from users where name equals Smith to adding an additional term or one equals one. And so one equals one is an example of tautology where something is always true. And so by making it this name equals Smith or one equals one, this statement will always resolve to true because one equals one is always true and anything or true is true. And so this statement will print all of the records in the table, not just the one associated with Smith. Let's take a look at a different structure. We see Smith single quote or one equals one semicolon space hyphen hyphen and so walking through this we see that smith again is in single quotes so it's properly single quoted we actually don't need single quotes around these ones as we had in the previous example but the reason why we did so previously is we were interpreting them as strings because we needed to use up the final single quote. So this single quote here has to be around a string, and so we had it one equals one as strings. In this case, we're using them as numbers, and so this is a completely valid statement, which is equivalent to what we just did. Select star from users where name equals Smith or one equals one. We're using our tautology with an or, so it always resolves to true. So all of the records are printed. However, now we have that single quote hanging out that we um, haven't handled, which is why we have a semicolon to terminate this SQL command saying, run this command and there'll be more to follow. And then we have these double hyphens which say, the rest of this is a comment and so do not interpret it. And so if you provide this to an SQL database, they're gonna run the first command and then look, say, okay, the rest of this is a comment. I'm not going to interpret it. And so it doesn't care about the fact that we have characters there hanging out from the original command that no longer create a valid command. And so now let's look at one more example. And so we see Smith, um, close quote, semicolon, drop, table, users, semicolon, truncate audit log semicolon space double hyphen and so this command first we're going to print all of the result 
all of the records contained in the table. So we get the same result. However, we're going a step further. We're also running a drop table user command. And what this does is it completely deletes the table we just extracted the data from. So no not only have we stolen the data, but we're also creating a denial of service attack against legitimate users of the data who can no longer use this table. Finally, we're truncating the audit log, um, removing audit information from that table, which could be used for forensic investigation, and then using a comment to clean up some of the characters that we don't want to have exist in the query because they would make it invalid. And so these are three examples of simple SQL injection attacks that take advantage of poor input sanitization. Because we were able to include a single quote, semicolons, and comment characters in our text, and they weren't escaped or otherwise removed from the string, we were able to have what should be data, what we provide, interpreted as commands in the SQL command. And so this is only the first of several different um, practice stages in WebGoat's SQL injection module. Invite you to continue working through this module and playing with the different types of SQL injection attacks. And so we see there are a variety of different consequences of an attack and um, different levels of severity depending on the details of the system being used. And then the remainder of these are practicing different types of basic or introductory SQL injection attacks. You can also move on to advanced attacks and talk about mitigations to SQL injection attacks in this WebGoat module. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you like the video, do give us a thumbs up and share it. Also, check out amazing discounts and offers on our premium courses in the description below.